Hi everyone and welcome to Clocking In. My name's Lathan MB and on this episode we have model turned horror actress forward slash screen queen, it's Danny Thompson. Hi Danny, how are you doing? Hello, I'm good. How are you? I'm really well. It's been so long since we've seen each other. It's been so long and I mean, it's almost the age I pretend I am. That long ago. <laughs> Stop. Let's not even talk about age. <laughs> I still think I'm 18 years old prancing around. <laughs> I think I was when I met you. <laughs> I know. All right, let's just talk about that a little bit. For for those of you that don't know, me and Danny met in Great Yarmouth in a show called Outrageous, I think it was called, wasn't it? It was. Do you remember that? Many time? moons ago. Let's, let's just have a look. And I'm still very good friends with uh, Miss Black Rain. Um, yeah. Know if she goes by now, but we're still very good friends um, from from that long ago. So we often talk about it with fond memories. Yeah, oh, very fond memories. I mean, and like we said, we were both so young back then, you know. And oh, it was fabulous, wasn't it? It was so much fun, and I think it came about myself and uh, Miss Like Rain. We were dancing, and we were strippers back yeah. then and uh the the club where you were having the show they were somebody from the club spoke to her and said we need two showgirls and uh -huh. she roped me in and and then i remember coming in and you saying can you dance and we're both like no and you're like can you be choreographed <laughs> and we're like, we don't know and we were i think originally we were supposed to just walk on in you know all these sequins and whatever yeah um and then we ended up in about four or five of the dance numbers as well because we choreographed <laughs> us and yeah but it was, it, was it, was <laughs> it was good times though wasn't it you know it was really good times so so, all right, then, let's, let's let's just talk a little bit very briefly about some of the projects you're doing right now. Can you have any spoiler, a spoiler alert for us? Can you let us know what's going on very briefly? I can, actually. I can let you into some secrets. So for anybody who doesn't know already, um, I, I moved on into the world of horror. So I work within horror movies. I'm an actress, but I also write a little bit and I present a little bit yeah so I've just um had a, a piece at a film festival um it's called Dragon it's part of a anthology called Horoscopes um and I've done the first and the second so I did Gemini and I've done Dragon so there was the horoscopes and the Chinese horoscopes and they they gave 12 people a piece um or a title basically so one of the star signs and we had to go away write a piece um film it Mm -hmm. And I've just been signed on to the third one, which is dark horoscopes, but I don't actually have a subject yet. So they, they do a, a kind of names out of hat thing and that hasn't happened. Um, wow. So the, but on the acting front, I'm just about to go off to the South Coast uh, to Bognor Regis, which is oh, where wow. I've, never, I've never been to do a film called Good Neighbours, in which I play a alien housewife. And I've just literally, literally just before I've come onto this podcast, gotten off the phone to a director in Texas called Joshua Kennedy, uh -huh. who I've worked with before. And he's now talking about me going back to Texas in March. So that could be exciting. Oh, well, so you've got lots on the cards then, haven't you? Yes. And I'm trying to move house and I'm living in Scotland at the moment, which is really random um, uh -huh. and was part of my plan. Um, so yeah, there's just so much going on, but I, life is for living, right? So I just say of yes. Of course, to it. absolutely. I think a lot of people get so wrapped up in the negativity and forget to move forward with the life and enjoy it. You know. Yes, exactly. All right, then let's let's go uh, way, way, way back, way back there. Okay. Okay. Where did it all start? Well, let's start with you know, what was it like for you growing up? For me growing up, I mean, I grew up in Norfolk. I, I was born in Australia. My family moved to England when I was two. Mm -hmm. And I grew up in, you know, small villages in Norfolk. If anyone knows Norfolk, Wroxham, Hofton. Mm -hmm. um, so, it, I mean, it was very quiet. And it was, I think I I probably always felt like I wanted to do more exciting things. 
yeah you know then kind of stay I mean I loved it there don't get me wrong it's a beautiful place and I love going back but I wanted to you know I wanted like bright lights and excitement yeah um, so I mean but growing up there going into acting it's like it's not a real job you know you have to kind of go and train to do something because I wouldn't have known how to do it yeah and so it all kind of really happened organically for me with having you know danced and then I ended up modeling and then the acting was after I kind of moved to London through modeling and it all kind of flowed for me but I mean I had a great time growing up and I honestly wouldn't have wanted to grow up anywhere else that like growing up in a in the countryside was yeah. perfect yeah and not far from the sea as well not far from the sea Which is and that's what that's probably from the north but I'm sure we'll come back to come back to that later yeah so um and, and you said about the the modeling uh career mm. what when you were young did you say did you know from a young age did you say okay i want to be a model no because i was actually very shy yeah um and it wasn't really until i was dancing that i really came out of my shell but i was quite shy growing up and i well no do you know what i didn't know i wanted to be a model I think I maybe wanted to act. I loved watching soap operas. Mm -hmm. And I just imagine I was character. I'd kind of, you know, entertain myself with coming up with these characters in my head. But it wasn't something I knew how to how to get into. Yeah. And then I think, you know, I think the Spice Girls also, they gave me a compliment. <laughs> but I didn't know that sounds bonkers, but I think as a teenage girl, when the Spice Girls came out and it was like, you know, there's a little bit of all of them in you somewhere. There's like a sporty side and there's the crazy uh -huh. side. But, you know, I feel like that that kind of gave me a little bit of girl power. Look, I still go by. I have a girl power tattoo on my shoulder. <laughs> um, I do. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, it was from the dancing, which honestly, if I look back and I'm like, how did I end up going to audition to be a stripper? Because I was shy. Like, yeah, what yeah. possessed me that day, even to to turn up to the audition and Miss Black Rain said to me she was like I honestly thought after your audition you know you might come in do one shift and then you'll you know she'll be one of those ones who you never see again but she was like you stuck it out and yeah it, yeah it changed me I think yeah I think sometimes people you know when they're quite shy they tend to do something that's out of the box to try and bring themselves out do you know what I mean it was so out of the box for me and then obviously that shyness is long, long gone, long gone. <laughs> long gone. <laughs> so, what did you, what did you do then before that? Did, did you work in an office or or something? I was studying fashion, so I was at college studying fashion. I'd mm -hmm. gone through various things at college. I'd done beauty, and then I realised I didn't really want to kind of pamper other people. Um, it wasn't for me. <laughs> and then I, I did a travel course, and then I was like, no, actually, I don't want to work in travel. I want to travel. Yeah. Uh, and then I was studying fashion. And again, I was I I don't know. I think I think looking back now, had I gone into fashion, I probably would have gone into the costume side of things. Yeah, and now when I yeah. when I'm working in film, if I'm producing or I'm writing, I very much have the costumes or characters in mind. I've produced movies where I've gone out and I've been the costume designer. So I've gone and I've bought all the costume for the characters. And mm -hmm. I think as well with my characters, when I'm playing a character, the costume like for me to be able to go and do that myself a lot of the directors will let you kind of get on board with that so I feel like maybe it did come in handy somewhere but yeah I it was completely different yeah world. yeah and um do you remember your first modeling shoot how did that come about did you send some pictures in did you get scouted Again, it was Miss Black Rain. She's, I'm, she's, she's the driving force behind me. <laughs> I, I, I tell you what, I want her on the show as well. Yeah, um, she said I needed to get some pictures done and she kind of badgered me to do it. So I got pictures done and then I ended up in the daily sport pretty quickly after that. Yeah. And they've got an agent. And then I then I started working on like the, the Bave Station shows. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of early on. I think they'd only going for about a year or so at the time. Uh -huh. And then through that, I ended up in the party world of London. So I was kind of working in London maybe two nights a week. The money was incredible back then on those shows. Uh -huh. You know, worked like a few hours a night. And then I was going out to the clubs and I loved it. 
And I, I really fell into that party scene. And then that's when I ended up moving to London. And I think I used to work maybe two nights a week, go out five nights a week. And I loved it. Whereas now I, I don't go out at all. I, I don't party now. But mm. sort of back then, that was, you know, that's what I wanted to do. And, you know, I loved London for a long time while I was there. Yeah. Oh, oh I love, I used to love London when I was younger. Now uh, I'm not so keen. You know what I mean? I'll go there, do what yeah. I do and then come away. Yeah, I mean, I lived for 16 years in the end. So, and I've only, I only moved at, in the middle of last year, so in the summer. So I was there 16 years in the same apartment. Um, and, you know, I had a great time, but I probably should have left a few years before I did. I think yeah. it was kind of in lockdown, I, I left London. I ran away to my friends by the sea in the northeast uh -huh. and probably should have took to uproot then but I went back because I was like oh, maybe I'm not quite finished in London um and then and then I just keep being drawn back to the northeast to the seaside so yeah, I yeah. my apartment and um I'm just waiting for the one I'm purchasing to go through so I'm staying in Scotland at my boyfriend's at the moment right um, okay so the a Scottish adventure was never part of the plan but here I am but Scotland be Scotland's beautiful though isn't it it's beautiful and I've been doing some amazing hikes so now you'll see me in on a hike you'll see me in a bar or or you know I'd never go out to a club now but yeah I'm my lifestyle's changed with it all but don't, but don't you think that's good that people see that side of you as well because on, on social media obviously we can all be glamorous we can all look great and fantastic but and then they put us in a box don't they you know they yeah. don't they don't see us going out and hiking, for example, or shopping or all those normal things that everybody does. Do you know the shopping thing? The only time I've ever really been recognised is always when I'm in it, when I have my hair in a messy, greasy bun and no makeup on. That's so so people seem to recognise me like that. But um, yeah, I mean, I think I now post a lot more hike stuff, but it, you don't on social media. You obviously have you know, a, a fan base or people that will follow you. And I'm trying mm. to kind of switch it around a little bit to yeah. step away from the glamour side of things because, you know, I did that a long time ago. And my acting still kind of, I still get cast in those kind of roles, but I'm trying to kind of, you know, I've got other interests now. I actually work in holistics as well. Oh, okay. Um, so I, there's another side to my bow, but um, I kind of keep the two worlds apart yeah i mean it it is very it's very difficult because like you said people do put you in a box and you know for for years on social pe media people have been, just been saying to me oh you cringe you cringe <laughs> <laughs> you know and, and i don't yeah i'm cringe yeah so what and you know and but i i i personally don't mind that but and then they don't think that you can do something else do they exactly Clearly. I mean, I've come on here today in my snoody, so the glamour yeah. is gone. I've got red lipstick on, but I was like, I'm at home. I'm really it's all about the red lipstick. It's about the red lipstick. <laughs> and honestly, I don't feel like me without my red lipstick on. And I go on hikes and my boyfriend will be like, do you really need red lipstick? Yes. Yes. I do, of course. <laughs> and if I don't have it, thank God for Photoshop now, I can just add it in After Effects. Exactly, yeah, because um, how, do, how do you think, you know, we're talking about the internet and stuff, how, how do you think that impacted, um, like, your modelling career and and just things in general, really? Well, it really changed the industry, I think. So I was modelling before Instagram and, you know, all these Insta models, and I think it was MySpace was kind of about back then. Yeah. And... You know, it wasn't a massive platform for for modelling. So obviously, newspapers, and magazines were still getting paid for your pictures. Yeah. And I think when social media came about, yeah. kind of all the lads' mags are gone basically, and most of the newspapers don't print page three or anything anymore. And it was basically because girls are just giving it all away for free, and it's like you know, here's me half naked. I know Twitter. I think Twitter you could post anything, couldn't you? So people could be mm -hmm. topless on you know, like Instagram limit. Um, but yeah, I mean, it really killed the industry for people who were getting paid to do that. But for yeah. me, it was about the time anyway that I, you know, I I was like, well, I've been doing this, you know, for a good few years now, and it's a career with, well, I'd say it's a career with a shelf life. However, I yeah. still am modeling, which I don't think I I didn't think I'd be modeling into my thirties, let alone you know, at forty. Yeah. But um, 
I'm still earning money from modeling. So I still got that fan base. So I think it's in a way it's good, but I, it's completely changed it around. So instead of, you know, getting paid by news, newspapers, magazines or what have you, you get paid by are you based on things like OnlyFans or any of those other platforms? So uh -huh. it's, it's it, it, there's a big shift. But yeah. I think for a little while there before those came about, it kind of, it kind of killed the industry. Yeah, yeah, for those consumers that used to go out and buy things more more so. Do you know what I mean? Like go down the local um, spa or whatever and go and get their magazines. Now, obviously, people don't because they, they get it online, you know, yeah. subscriptions and things like that. But um, I've completely forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> but obviously, it's opened other doors with it be with with social media yeah i mean it has like i'm saying obviously you can you can kind of you can work on your strengths and i think you can create your own kind of online persona more and people will subscribe to you so it's about kind of finding your brand really and finding your niche yeah definitely definitely working within that Mm. And also, you've got so many strings to your bow, and we're, and we're just going to touch on some of them uh, today. You've also done some presenting. I have. I've presented over horror, sports, um, online casino, so all kinds of different things. And I, I, I want to do a little, I've got a little idea of, for some kind of travel style stuff, so the hikes and the travel, because mm. I've kind of moved into more that kind of, Thing in my free time i want to kind of touch on that so that's what i'm looking to do next yeah i mean yeah i know I, I must be honest that was because i i travel quite a lot myself and and that was something that i was thinking of you know to do some kind of travel thing and then i thought do you know what i'm gonna give podcasting a go yeah. i enjoy talking to people i enjoy listening to what they say because like i said before you know people don't realize that we've all got a backstory yeah yeah i think yeah i mean i think people are complex aren't they They've all everybody's got loads of different things going on even if they don't think they have when you mm. suddenly talk you're like wow and you do that and i didn't know this about you so yeah people are very interesting yeah and it, it all goes back to people putting you in that box doesn't it when they see you you know looking beautiful or whatever on social media they just automatically put you in that box which is a shame really and have you have you received um any sort of like negativity towards you you know like doing the photo shoots comments um you know <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i mean i've never let it get to me i'm just like block whatever i don't care because you know people's opinions don't really matter to me so unless unless somebody i know or somebody i care about their opinions matter to me strangers opinions don't don't matter to me like you have to have quite a thick skin and you have to learn not to let things get to you but yeah I've heard, I was about myself like she's this she's that whatever who cares uh, yeah they're still, they're, still, they're still looking on my page and they're still reading my stuff so. exactly those haters are always on your page <laughs> I mean somebody I somebody commented something the other day and about like somebody had said something to her and I was like just unfollow them. Let them carry on following you because it's a follower, but just unfollow them. You, you mute them. You can't see their stuff. Who cares? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and I think in this day and age, you know, too many people, you know, they see one thing of you and they can't wait to get on that keyboard and just put something negative. And I don't, I've never quite understood that myself. I can't. Like, I, I've got a friend and she owns a vegan restaurant, her and her husband, and mm -hmm. they get people going on trips people who are in Australia or America who have never been to their restaurant leaving reviews saying like oh we were there on Saturday night and it was terrible blah 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 and it's it's like weird vegan haters like it's wow. like angry <laughs> like trying to ruin her business it's like that this is bonkers it's called Oak Tree by the way and it's in uh, it's in Leon C and it's incredible no, listening to this if you're around Leon C food is incredible go there Right, and just while we're on the, the subject of dropping a link, just remind everybody where they can get in touch with you, get hold of you. Uh, with me. So Instagram is at Miss Danny Tease, and that's M I S S, -S D A N I T E E Z E. Um, and Twitter is Miss Danny Tease 2 because my first one got hacked and stolen. And <laughs> I back. Um, 
Facebook's Miss Danny Tees and my website is www.danny-thompson.com. Okay, I will include those in the description, obviously. Um, I, I just wanted to, I know we're going back to the modeling again, but I just wanted to talk about those lad smags. How, how were they to do? Super fun. I mean, the shoots were always fun. You're usually in and out quite quickly. So you'd yeah. get to the studio, work with the same photographers over and over again. So, you'd, you know, you'd become friends. And it, yeah, they were, I mean, it was super fun. Um, but, and I did get to the point where I used to start doing my own makeup. You know what it's like when someone else does your makeup and you know your face, so you know what you like. And I'm kind of sneaking off, adding extra eyeliner or dark. <laughs> I did get to a point where I was like I'll just do my own makeup and I think when you've kind of when you've worked a bit more you can get away with doing that so when you're new you just kind of let them I mean my first patient issue they backcombed my hair and I looked like I would, well I looked like I was out of the 80s and I looked <laughs> like I was I was like 21 or something and I looked so much old um just because what they did I was like why did I let that pass but we let <laughs> <laughs> and um just very 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 quickly i heard you mention your boyfriend do i hear wedding bells do i need to get a fascinator <laughs> not quite yet it's all quite new um oh. maybe maybe one day i mean i've moved in but that was that was just i don't know just a circumstance <laughs> so i've moved in temporarily <laughs> until my purchase of my new flat completes and then I think he might follow me over. So, so um, yeah, that's that's the plan anyway. Oh, fabulous. Now, um, I just want to go to some questions because obviously I let everybody know that you were going to be on the show and, um, I know, and I've got some questions for you, if that's okay. Oh, exciting. Oh, I, like to, I love to get people involved, you know, and this one is, let's see, I haven't got my glasses on, so <laughs> her name is Chrissy, and she wants to know, um, do you have any advice for future models or actors? I think, obviously, be yourself, because... I think it was Judy Garland who said, be yourself because everyone else is taken. And it's so true. Be yourself, find your niche, because if you're trying to be something you're not, or you're trying to emulate somebody else, there's no point. They've already done it. So just be who you are. Um, obviously, watch other people, look at other people's pictures, you know, get ideas, but then kind of, you know, find your own style and just work hard and things should work out. Absolutely. And this one is from Scarlett. Uh, who is your favourite model? Could be male or female. Model. Um, I'm going to go with Miss Black Rain. Obviously, I love the, the Dita Von Tees. I love that whole pin-up style. Yeah, um, But, yeah, Miss Black Rain, she's a friend of mine, so she'd kill me if I didn't say her. But also, her shots are incredible, and she works so hard, and her uh -huh. styling's incredible. Yeah. And she makes me feel really lazy, because I'm just like, she's like, when did you last shoot? months ago um but yeah i mean her stuff's incredible so check her out i i, to I totally agree with you there I, I see her on my feed all the time and i'm like that is an another amazing shot because you know with some models um you see one shot and you say oh she looks fabulous or he or they <laughs> Uh, and then you'll see another whatever. shot, yeah, whatever. And then you'll see another shot, and you'll say, "Oh, that one's not so good." But all her shots are fantastic. Yeah, but she always had that face that like photographed so perfectly, and her poses, and it's like when she dances, she's incredible. So yeah, yeah. Okay, we have another one. Yeah, <laughs> this one is from Isaac. Have you ever been? terrified in one of your own horror movies um <laughs> no you're there and you're doing stuff and a lot of my movies they, they kind of tend to be more comedy horror than all-out horror um i think for me i'm more scared not of the scene i'm shooting but you could be shooting somewhere where there are spiders like i've shot in a forest and then there's a spider and, and then i don't like it i'm not good with with spiders so <laughs> You get, yeah, terrified of the spiders. I actually did a shoot on a film called Man, and we all camped on set. So it was it was on this farm, and there was a campsite opposite, so it was just easier for everyone to stay there. Mm -hmm. And my tent 
this porch with a the window. So it had a porch and the porch didn't completely zip up. And in the morning, there'd be all these money spiders that have snuck in and they're like on their webs trapezing around and I'd just scream <laughs> and the makeup on come running safely from the spiders. So yeah, I'm not a spider fan. Okay, and, talk, and talking about movies. So from the time that you get an idea, that little bit of glimmer, how long does it take for you to recruit actors and put, the, put it into production and obviously edit and all those things that come with making a movie? How long is that process on average? I know every time's different, but sort of like on average. I mean, it can happen very quickly. So with the Horoscope series, Horoscopes, Horoscopes 2, the producer kind of gave us our title. So he picked a horoscope out of a hat from each of the 12 directors, gave us our title, and then we had, you know, maybe six months to get it completely finished and to him. Mm -hmm. For me, I'm I'm more used to writing a feature film script. So writing a short film I really struggled with because it's you can't develop your characters you don't know their backstory and you obviously have that really short space of time to kind of get the beginning middle end or you know something you know something happening so it took me a while that time to get the script together and once I finally got the idea from getting the idea the script was down the next day I cast it I got my location sorted and we shot it very quickly and the edit was done yeah and the second one dragon I couldn't think of an idea. So they gave me Dragon and I was like, this is really difficult. Like, what am I going to do? It took me ages. And then I was in the bath one day. Like I'd been brainstorming. I had all of these ideas. All of them were rubbish. And then I was in the bath one day and the idea just kind of went ting. So I like jumped out of the bath, wrote it. And again, it was all done very quickly. So it can be, you know, it can be very quick if, if you've got a team that can work very quick. But then I've had another film, a feature film that I wrote, and then it got stuck in the edit because of funding. Um, we didn't have the funding for the edit, and that took four years to complete. So it, it depends. It depends. Yeah, yeah. And and do you enjoy the process of, uh, you know, the the shooting of the film and the editing? Do you actually get involved in in, in all that? And um, the shooting I do, and I have been in the films that I've produced and, and directed as well. So obviously I'm there on set. Um, I get very involved in the costume and the styling. And I even did, I was even in there with a paintbrush with the set designer on the last one, painting walls. Um, in the end, I tend, if it's somebody editing that I know very well and they know kind of what I want, I've left the editor to kind of get on with it. And and then they've kind of sent it back to me and I've said, oh, okay, can we maybe change this? Can we shorten that? Can we do something here? Um, so we kind of work that way. Like I let them kind of work with it a little bit because to be honest, I'm not a director, I'm an actor. Yeah. Um, I've gone into directing from having a lot of experience on set, being on so many sets, watching other people work. But, you know, I have no technical skills when it comes to editing. I'm I'm learning slowly because I want to do this um, travel thing. Yeah. I'm slowly trying to edit but I'm using apps and I'm using you know I'm not using proper edit software so I kind of tend to leave it to people that know what they're doing. Yeah well the, the best thing is is to start with one of the free softwares on the PC and and learn it bit by bit and you know that would be the best way to sort of like learn it that's how I learned it because obviously yeah. I, I was used to using mobile apps for editing but when you go onto the PC you're like, oh my god! <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. But it's it's. I'm on the mobile app. Yeah, but yeah. That, it is it is really on... rewarding. Mm. You know, and it's especially yeah. now because because the the content that I'm doing is a lot longer. Uh, you know, it's not that 10 second TikTok video or, or 15 second um, video. They, it goes on a lot longer and you, you have to keep referring back. And, you know, what I'm, you know, it's it's completely different, but it is enjoyable when you've seen the whole lot and you're like, oh. But, you know, there's always something that you want to change anyway. Of course. And you always criticize your own work. So I do it when I'm acting or when I'm, you know, with. What if, I wish I'd done that differently. I wish I'd pulled that face differently. Or I'd done, you know, you always everyone's critical of their own work. I think being a perfectionist, but I do think with editing, like it's one of those, that's definitely the next thing I want to learn because I think, to, and especially now with content creating, you need to learn to do everything yourself because yeah. you can't rely on other people to get your content edited for you because you know no one's got time for that 
quick exactly so, and and the expense behind it as well yeah like yeah getting professionals to do it so it's good to be able to you know learn all these things and you know now if you're enjoying this episode don't forget to like comment review and share it with your besties now let's just take a look at some of danny's modeling shots May I remind you, if you're watching this, you will be able to see that photo shoot. But if you're just listening, you will just hear some music for 30 seconds or so. Step into the unknown. This is where dreams. Okay, Danny, so out of all of the genres, <laughs> out of all of the genres um, in acting, why horror? Ah, well, after modelling and I went to drama school, I, um, I, 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 you know, I trained at normal drama school. It's a screen acting school. Right. So we touched on Shakespeare and you do the voice and you learn you know, about the methods and you do all of the things you do at any other drama school, but you do it all on camera. So I didn't, you know, I didn't set out just to do horror back then, um, but I've always loved horror films. And I don't know why, because I'm very pink and glittery and like, I like unicorns and sparkle, but then I also, I've always loved horror movies. And I like, you know, I like kind of darker side of things, a little bit of the occult and a little bit of spookiness. Yeah. When I left drama school, I ended up doing a, it was a celebrity ghost hunt. So right. back then, I glamour modeling so they're obviously desperate they asked me to go on this show um and, and some of the crew on that show were making horror movies and they were like oh we've got you know we've got a part for you if you want and i kind of did bits with them and then after drama school it kind of got a little bit word of mouth i, I ended up doing a couple of horror films and then i just get booked now and it's a very small close-knit community the horror industry really so, it's just kind of gone that way and I think for me as well I've I just feel like I found my niche whereas you know I you know I'm obviously I've got a certain look you know I've got the glamour model physique so I was always going to get cast for certain types of roles um and I think that kind of lends itself well to horror as well because you do have those kinds of characters in horror films you know it's your stereotypical kind of scream queen really yeah. so I kind of fell into it oh, it's you know, I'm happy I'm there. I feel like, you know, because otherwise I could have been one of those actors that's kind of podding around not knowing really where I fit. Yeah. And I think typecasting is not actually a bad thing. It's great if you can be a character actor and you can do all of these, you know, very different things. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you are, you know, it's only, it's really the only industry you can really still be kind of booked and discriminated against for how you look, isn't it? It's like, you know, if, if somebody has an idea in mind for a character, it doesn't matter how good an audition you do. If you don't look the part, you won't get the part. Or you could do a terrible audition. I've done auditions where I've walked out and thought that was, and then I've got the call saying you've got the job. And I'm like, why would you give me that job from that? But it's because of, you know, the look that they wanted and directors will work with you. So if they know that you've got the foundations and, you know, you, you, you're a trained actor, you can be directed, you know, they can yeah. get out of you what they want, then, then, you know, it kind of works. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm happy that I'm doing the horror. And I don't think, in, in, I don't think I'll necessarily ever move away from the horror. I, you know, I like, I like doing comedy roles. Like I actually quite like working with comic timing and, um, you know, I'd like to do a bit more drama and, you know, so there are different roles I'd like to do, but I think I'd always go back to horror. Yeah, I was just going to say, in an in an ideal world, what would be your ideal role? 
I I like playing very strong characters. I play a good baddie. I like playing the evil characters, the bitch. Or I'd, what I'd like to do, though, is because I do get cast for my look a lot, I'd like to do a role where I get, you know, some really horrible prosthetics and I get to look like some kind of, you know, really evil demon or something very different so that I can't sort of play off what I look like and it's, it's you know, more about your kind of physicality and movement and voice and things like that. I mean, I've, I've enjoyed doing a little bit of voiceover stuff recently for people. Right. Um, which I thought, God, this is great. I can do this in my pyjamas and I don't have to put any makeup on and my hair's in a bun. So <laughs> I'd like to do more voiceovers if anyone would like to book me to stay in my pyjamas and put my Absol hair in a bun. Absolutely. Yeah. Your, all your information is going to be in the description so they'll yeah. know where to get hold of you uh, and get you booked in for some more voiceovers. Um, yeah. The comedy. I, I mean, I love doing comedy my, myself. I, I find comedy easier than doing anything else. Mm. Do, do, do you know what I mean? I, I don't yeah. know why that is. Um, I just, maybe it's because I just like to fool around all the time. <laughs> yeah. So is there, is there any, um, you know, like recent movies, late 23, 24, which you'd have loved to have been in? Oh God, I don't know. I don't know about late 23, 24. I'm, I, I, I never, I don't know what day of the week it is, let alone like what's come out where and where. <laughs> okay, but then I, let's, I let's, let's, broad, let's broaden that a little bit yeah. then. From all time, of all time, what movie would you have thought, yeah. oh, I'd love to have been in that? I don't know. Um, I mean, I think the comedy, I mean, I, I wouldn't like to see me in a rom-com or anything because I can't bear watching them. I wouldn't really want to do that kind of film. But something I mean, like Legally Blonde or, you know, those kinds of roles where... They're fun and you know, you know. Just well, seems you're, seems you're wearing Barbie. What about would you have loved to have been in the Barbie movie? <laughs> I would love to have been in the new Barbie <laughs> movie. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't love Barbie? I know, I know. When it when it came out, everybody was saying, "You've got to watch it. You've got to watch it. You've got to watch it." So, so yeah. And I, I quite enjoyed yeah, it, I must admit. One of my girl girlfriend groups, I've got the the bitches and the witches. I went with the bitches. We went uh -huh. to see the Barbie movie. Um, and I think we all loved it. Really, it was like I was the main one who wanted to see it, but everybody else kind of went along with it. We all had we all had fun. Yeah, yeah, I, I enjoyed it, to be honest. Um, what was your first horror movie you watched? The first horror movie I watched was, it was It, so I think Canada, and it was the, you know, it's a miniseries, it's a two-parter, isn't it? So the, the old one from, you know, not the not the newer version. Uh -huh. And I think I was eight years old, and we were in the basement, and we watched it, and I was so terrified that I had to sit with the light on for the rest of the, <laughs> the, the week, I think. Um, so that was the first one I remember, I was far too young. And then I really got into watching horror, again, back in Canada. I used to go to Canada most summers, my mm -hmm. cousins and my aunts and uncles there and um it was it was in that that kind of late 90s era when we had the craft and scream and urban legend all those real 90s slashes and i was over there we watched scream and that was it i was like this is what i did and i think with scream it's horror it's a slasher it's got comedy elements in it and i like that that's the kind of film i love so there is a bit of humor in there but there's some good gory death scenes yeah so i like a glossy I'm not, you know, I'm. I don't really like blood, so I'm, you know, the real gory ones I do cringe at. But you know, where it's like you've got some good kills, it's funny, the script's good, there's some good one line one liners in there with the characters and mm. scenes. That's all my thing. But don't you think the older um, horror movies were actually better? Um. I mean, yeah, I mean, that era I loved. I I think things coming out now, nothing really surprises me. And it's maybe because I've watched so much, mm -hmm. but I, they have to kind of push the boundaries and they make it more gory or more horrific. And I'm, I'm not really into the gore. So for me, I'd like, so I don't really believe in ghosts. I'd love to, but I've, I'm a bit seeing as believing, but I do like a really good haunting film. Mm -hmm. And I can find myself being really creeped out. So I think the last really good film that I saw, and this is quite, this is probably, a nearly 10 year old film now is the autopsy of jane um that's the last film that i watched that oh, I, I've, seen film that I've got that. yeah 
So we actually watched it again the other night. My boyfriend hadn't seen it. And um, so they, there's a scene where there's a bell on like the toe. And so the bell kind of jingles and you know that the, you know, the guy, so we basically went to bed afterwards and I've got, so I do, um, I do crystal healing and Reiki and this is like my other yeah. side of me. And yeah. I've got this little bell that I start my sessions with. It's just a tiny little bell. And I was like, so I waited for the light to get out and, and I just like jingled my bell and he was like, I'm not funny. You're not funny. I was like, I think I am. <laughs> and how how did the uh, crystal healing and raking come about then? Has that always been there, deep within? Um, I've always been a little bit of a, a hippie at heart, but my my mum actually does crystal healing and angelic healing, and I so I've always I've always had an interest. I've always been interested in crystals, and and I actually did my training um, with her for my raking one and two before lockdown, and then during lockdown. When I had all the time on my hands, I did crystal healing and I do sound therapy now. So I've, I've done all that training and, and went back and did my Reiki master with her so I can teach. But um, So that's kind of my other business, which is on hold at the moment because I, I had it set up in London. I was working quite a lot in London and then I obviously up sticks and moved, but I haven't settled into my own place. So I can't really have clients in at the moment. So I've um, I've just kind of gone on a little bit of a hiatus. So I'm yeah. working on Instagram, which is Stardust by danny so the company stardust holistics but it's stardust by danny for the okay. um but when i move i will be setting up a retreat and and kind of doing that alongside the acting because i don't i don't think acting for me it's i love it but i don't love the industry i don't love going to auditions i don't love mm. i'm not i don't really have that real chase in me anymore because i feel like i've got, kind of found my niche and i'm stuck within it and people give me work so i'm not kind of I'm not really as hungry, I think, as, as like, you know, young actors when they first start and they're desperate to like really get into yeah, roles. Yeah. You know, I can't hear anything worse than going to auditions and doing all of that anymore. So I feel like, well, I don't think I'll ever give up acting. And I, I think acting, producing and doing what I want to do. And I think I'm in a position really now that I've moved north where, you know, I've, I've got quite an easy, comfortable life. So I I can kind of pick and choose the jobs and take them when I want to. And I'm just kind of looking for something else that kind of feeds my soul a little mm. bit more. I think yeah. for helping other people. And I'd like to take that online as well. So I do have like online sound baths, which I will be restarting when I move. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just something else that I, I want to do. And I feel like with nature and going on all these hikes and I think outdoors is very good for things so i'm kind of the advocate of kind of getting outside for your health yeah. um and i think as well within the acting industry i think people need to have something else not as a job but something to kind of keep them sane because it's a difficult industry and it's it's you know it can be tough you can mm -hmm. be not working for long periods of time so you know you have to and you have to develop quite a thick skin so i think Definitely. a lot of actors need to kind of think about their well-being as well and think about you know and I'm not just actors, I think everybody should be thinking about that. Well, you know, balancing oh, their oh, life. Oh, that, that, absolutely. I totally agree with that because so many, so many people will work themselves into the ground and not actually enjoy the fruits of their labour. Mm, that is it. And I think I found my balance. And I think had we not had, obviously, the lockdowns and the whole, you know, it was a difficult time and, you know, a lot of people lost people. So it was difficult. But I think I actually found through not being able to do what I do through not being able to act and you know the whole of that industry you know it was it was not a industry that needed to stay open at the time I had to find something else that mm. I and something else like for me to keep me occupied and I actually yeah you know, I have a lot to be thankful for really because for me it kind of about like you know I don't want to party all the time I don't really want this life all the time I want <laughs> you know and I, I found that love of hiking in the outdoors and so now I just kind of want to keep that balance. So yeah, that's why and, the two businesses. And and, and uh, there's always room for one more because I think with holistic and Reiki and all of those kind of things, the outdoor thing, you could do a podcast too. I could do a podcast too. I mean, I don't know where I find the time to do anything else. Are you one of these people? I've got this long list of things. I have a notebook for all these tasks and I start ticking them off. And before I do three i've added five it's like a constant <laughs> but yeah i mean 
looking at doing um you know i've got tiktok channels there's everything set up i've got the you know the instagram set up and i'm looking at doing like videos and you know short soundbar tasters and mm -hmm. talking about chakras about the crystal so it's all on the cards um but i just until i've moved and i've settled and my treatment studio is set up um and i also have to be setting up a photo studio as well in wow. so my, my new apartment the, the list the list is just endless with you yeah. isn't it it's, yeah. it's just endless you know yeah. you, you keep introducing something else and so you say that you have you, you, <laughs> you say you haven't got the hunger but you obviously still have i think i'm driven but i'm driven in different to do different things like yeah. i think for me there's so much i want to do and i think also getting older you're like i think god i in my 20s i like, don't get me wrong i had a great time i love yeah. the partying but i think what if i'd have had the like the work drive that i have now then yeah um so i think i yeah, I think I I know that you have to kind of go out and get the things you want. So that's my plan. Yeah, but as as we said earlier, you know, it's it's a lot easier to do a lot more things now because we have the internet and social media, you know, you've got a great following anyway. So yeah. I think it's a lot easier to to introduce more more things because you've got that fan base anyway. It is, it is. And myself, we actually did, we reviewed lingerie together. So we had a lingerie, we had a podcast, so we, we podcast the lingerie channel, but we started our own afternoon teas um, stuff and we were kind of just doing random little podcasts and things there. But we, it's, for us, it was the getting us in the same room at the same time because we live on opposite ends of the country. So yeah. it was a bit difficult now. But yeah, I mean, maybe I'll look into doing something else. Mm. Okay, Danny, it has been fabulous catching up with you. I'm sure we could go on for another hour or so. It's been amazing, yeah. and you look amazing. I, I don't know if I do today. It's the end of the day, and I'm, I'm half in my pajamas. Thank you for saying so. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much. I know your life's very busy. You're moving. You've got all these things going on. Thank you so much for doing this. I really do appreciate it and hopefully see you very soon. Thank you for having me on the show. It's an absolute pleasure. See ya. <laughs>